Thank you for joining us for this brief presentation on the uh, use and function of the Equity Holding Trust Transfer. The Equity Holding Trust Transfer, or EH Trust, is um, essentially a means for transferring real estate to a home buyer or an investor uh, by keeping the existing mortgage in place and avoiding the uh, downsides and pitfalls of uh, standard creative real estate financing and uh, such things as the due on sale clause and so on. So um, should take us about another five or six minutes to get through the whole thing. So thank you for being here and let's uh, let's do this. It should be noted that um, very few people, including many licensed legal professionals, have any uh, real understanding of the equity holding trust or the land trust in general. So if you run into someone who says, I don't understand it, they should be referring you to someone else who does. However, what we found in the past is that most attorneys, rather than saying, I don't understand this and uh, therefore I refer you to someone else, what they do instead is to say, let me do something else for you. And they'll offer doing a wraparound contract for deed, equity, share, lease option, lease purchase, uh, or any one of those financing schemes that we try desperately to stay away from. Now, this is not to say that you shouldn't seek independent legal counsel for anything that you do with us or, or anything you hear from us, but don't be surprised uh, if you find out that maybe two out of a hundred licensed uh, real estate uh, professionals, or excuse me, licensed legal professionals, much less real estate professionals, have any idea what an equity holding trust is. You can call us for recommendations for attorneys if you like, and we can certainly help you there. In essence, the equity holding trust transfer system is a, a program that allows for the safe uh, subject to transfer of real estate ownership from one party to another when the parties feel it necessary that an existing mortgage remain in place for the benefit of the incoming and or the outgoing parties. Now, one should remember that virtually every mortgage loan from anywhere has a due on sale clause or an alienation provision within the loan. Oftentimes it's paragraph 17 of most mortgage loans. So you could take a look at your orders and you'll see what I mean. Now understand that the equity holding trust, um, by virtue of um, the IRS guidelines and uh, regulations, does not violate a due on sale clause. Now, any of the other kinds of programs that you could use, including lease options and equity shares, contracts for deeds, and on and on, do violate the due on sale clause. And if, it ha if that happens to be a primary issue, then it's a primary reason for using an equity holding trust. So just note that the equity holding trust doesn't involve a transfer of title beyond the owner's own trust. Therefore, it uh, doesn't constitute an, any alienation of title, as it were. So you can look that up. Uh, that would be uh, Title 12, the U.S. Code, paragraph 1701J3, better known as the Garn St. Germain Act, or the Federal Depository Institutions Regulations Act of 1982. So in the slides that uh, follow, let's talk about a few, very few, of the many benefits of the equity holding trust transfer. Now, bear in mind that when we're talking about transferring um, the benefits of ownership, we're not trans talking about transferring ownership per se. We're talking about transferring all of the benefits of ownership, including income tax write-off, use, occupancy, possession, water rights, mineral rights, and all of the fee simple bundle of rights that are, uh, can be enjoyed in um, a real estate ownership. And in such case, the uh, acquiring party or the person that you would refer to as the buyer uh, needn't qualify for a loan, come up with a, uh, a mortgage loan, uh, come up with a down payment, uh, and so on. So uh, knowing just a little bit about this process can make a lot of people a lot of money, whether they're real estate agents or brokers or attorneys or f financial planners or buyers or sellers or investors. So let's take a look at some of the benefits. 
The application of the equity holding trust uh, allows an owner to legitimately, comfortably, and without any subterfuge or deceit, uh, dispose of property or a buyer to acquire property uh, without any down payment, loan application, or any more uh, credit approval process than the owner would insist on. It's, um, uh, it's the safest, cleanest way to do what's called creative uh, or seller-assisted financing in real estate. In an equity holding trust, uh, the uh, equity holding trust transfer, an owner's legal exposure regarding the property is shifted from the owner of the property to its trustee, who is holding the property's title and acting as the property's legal and equitable owner or title holder for the term of the trust, be it two years, five, ten, twenty, or thirty. Now, interestingly enough, now somebody who has a hundred percent direct control over the actions of the trustee has 100% direct control over the property itself. So if someone jumps up and says, I want to sue you, and you happen to have your property in a title holding land trust, you can comfortably say, yeah, sue me if you wish, but I don't own the property. Oh, really? Well, who does? Well, that's up to you to find out. If you want to go to the trouble of uh, flying out here where the trustee is and uh, opening a deposition, that'd be your business, but I don't own the property anymore. When in that case, the trustee then, if contacted, and the trustee's name does appear on the, um, on the, uh, the, t the title or the uh, county property tax records, the trustee can be contacted. And if someone asks the trustee questions, the trustee will say, I can't answer those questions because I'm prohibited by law and by the contract itself from releasing any information about the property or any uh, beneficiary of any property of the thousands of trusts that we hold title to. So the attorney then would have to go to some great lengths and great expense in order to perfect any sort of a lawsuit against the uh, the owner. And when he did, he'd probably find out that because of the dual beneficiary nature of the trust, he wouldn't be able to to file a lien on the property. So that's a, a major, major concept in the protection, the asset protection for anyone's real estate. The equity holding trust concepts keeps all dealings relative to the property itself and relative to the trust and the beneficiaries completely secret, private, and anonymous. Uh, when the deed is recorded to the trustee, that's the only transfer that's noted in the public record. So someone could look at the public record in order to find out who the owner of a particular property is. And what they would see is that the property is owned by XYZ Corporation, a nonprofit California corporation, uh, 501C, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the owner's, the, the original owner's name wouldn't show up anyplace. And it makes it extremely difficult to perfect a lien or a lawsuit against someone who owns a property in a trust. Now, it's not impossible because you could sue that person. But when you did, you'd find out that because of the co-beneficiary nature of the trust, a lawsuit in personam or against the person would not justify a lawsuit in rem against the property because the ownership is personal property. Personal property can't be partitioned by a judgment creditor. And as a result, the property is protected from such liens and lawsuits and judgments. The equity holding trust allows uh, an owner to transfer mortgage interest and property tax write-off benefits to a tenant co-beneficiary in the property in exchange for getting higher rents and uh, freedom from the drudgery of income property management and maintenance. The, um, uh, the concept is that uh, a regular lease tenant in the property, if they can show the IRS that they have the risk and burdens of ownership and they have a contractual obligation to make the payments and if it's their personal and private residence, they are entitled to take the income tax write-off for mortgage interest and property tax. The third party nature of a property's ownership in an equity trust uh, avoids uh, di dispute and dishonesty and inappropriate actions between or among the beneficiaries. Now, in, in saying that, understand that it's very much like an escrow settlement process. Um, 
a settlement official, licensed settlement official, or a licensed escrow officer actually owns the property during the settlement process. A, the equitable title remains with the seller until the sale is, is completed, but the legal title is uh, handed to the settlement official and held throughout the, the escrow process. This means then that uh, neither party can do anything to harm the other party because neither one of them own the property yet. So the question is, well, is it complicated? Sounds complicated. You've got a trust and uh, you've got beneficiary agreements and all kinds of things. Well, here's how complicated it is. The equity holding trust is no more than a simple third party title holding Illinois type land trust. There's four steps and four documents that make it happen. The first one is a trust. It's a, a seven or eight page document that actually uh, dictates the terms of transferring the property's ownership or the title to someone who is designated as the trustee or the holder of title. The next document is merely an assignment of beneficiary interest where somebody is named as a co-beneficiary in the trust along with the original owner, the settlor beneficiary or the grantor, the owner of record. And then next, the, uh, the new beneficiary simply leases the property from its new owner, the trustee. And from that point forward, they treat it as their own home or their own investment property, taking all of the same exact benefits as would anyone in a fee simple real estate ownership position. And then there's the beneficiary agreement. That's uh, analogous uh, to a partnership agreement where the parties get together and decide which what each person's responsibilities and benefits are going to be, what happens if one of them dies, uh, all of the exigencies that could come about uh, in the transaction to its uh, termination. So I ask again, is it complicated? With each one of these documents in place, the acquiring party automatically receives all the benefits of fee simple real estate ownership. In other words, income tax write-off for mortgage interest and property tax, use, occupancy, possession, appreciation potential, quiet enjoyment, equity buildup from loan principal reduction, merchantability, marketability, uh, even water and mineral rights, and uh, possibly as importantly, uh, avoidance of any lenders due on sale admonitions. In other words, the equity holding trust transfer does not violate a lender's due on sale clause. Now, before I show you how a land trust uh, works, uh, a title holding land trust and the equity holding trust, let me review quickly a simple family trust. It's something most people know something about. Uh, a settlor, let's say by the name of Bob Jones. A settlor means the person who sets up the trust or settles the affairs of a trust. So Bob Jones makes sure that he's the beneficiary of this trust that he's creating. He then vests all of his properties, horses, cows, title, cars, tractors, anything he owns, real estate, into this trust. He gives the legal title of everything he owns to a trust, uh, analogous maybe to a corporation in some ways. At that particular point now, he holds the equitable title for himself. That means there's two titles uh, in any ownership uh, situation, equitable and legal. Legal title is merely the paperwork that proves that you own something. And the equitable title is the benefit that you derive from owning whatever it is, including equity and profit and so forth. So the next step now is, is Bob wants to make sure that since the trustee is going to be the manager of these assets, he wants to make sure it's someone that he trusts implicitly. So he names himself as the trustee, as also he is the settlor, the beneficiary, and the trustee. So for all practical purposes, this is a dry trust. It really has no force or effect, except that when Bob dies, uh, his heirs won't have to go through probate and pay off all their creditors and so forth. And throughout the course of this simple trust, Bob has a full power of direction. Uh, excuse me. The trustee, Bob, has the full power of direction. And, uh, and as in any trust, he's going to need to appoint a remainder agent, someone to take over after he dies. And that typically is, is the um, settlor's wife. Let's talk about something that's slightly more complicated, but more different than complicated. 
we're going to talk about a title holding land trust. Now here's how it works. Let's say the same guy, Bob, has got a house and he wants to protect it from an asset protection standpoint. What he does is he puts that house into what's called a title holding land trust. He then makes sure, again, that he's the beneficiary so that he doesn't lose any benefit of the ownership of that property. He then appoints a third party trustee. This time it's a third party trustee, not himself. And at that particular point, rather than giving the legal title to the trust and holding the equitable title for himself, he gives both the legal and equitable title to the trustee, which means, for all practical purposes, the trustee owns that property. Bob no longer owns it. So if somebody's going to sue Bob, they can't get to the property because he's not the owner. However, he does have 100% complete power of direction over the trustee. He can tell the trustee what to do, uh, when to do it, uh, when to revoke the trust, not revoke the trust. He's full complete control. So he's really lost nothing in the process other than having a bullseye on his back that says sue me because I own real estate. Now, like in the living trust, he's still going to have to appoint somebody to be a remainder agent. In this case, it'll be a remainder co-beneficiary, since this is a beneficiary-directed trust and not a trustee-directed trust. However, let's say that in this particular land trust, he names a, a co-beneficiary who would like to lease the property or would like to own the property. So let's call him Fred Smith for the moment. Fred Smith then has the right to go ahead and lease the property from the trustee. The trustee will set up a uh, separate entity to collect payments and make disbursements, and it's a free bill paying and collection service. Equity management company is who we use in, in um, Chowchilla, California. Now this, folks, is an equity holding trust transfer with a land trust, an Illinois type land trust at its center. This is an equity holding trust. Now, there's another variation of this. So let's go back and talk about a three beneficiary equity holding trust. The same scenario now, Bob Jones has a property and uh, you as the investor would like to own that property and you want to explain to him how a equity holding trust works and take it that way so you don't have to pay uh, down payment or qualify for loans and so on. So Bob gives the uh, title to the trustee Equity Holding Corporation is who we use. And at that particular point, uh, the mutual power of direction is shared between you and Bob. Now, now both of you now direct the trustee, and the trustee will respond to any mutual direction. You, no one can do a um, unilateral uh, directive, but if everyone's in agreement, then the trustee will do whatever the beneficiaries tell it to. However, you don't want to live in that house. You want to bring in a third beneficiary who's going to live in the house for you and make the payments, handle the upkeep and the repair and the property tax and the insurance and perhaps share future appreciation with you and so on. You can use this as a an equity share, a lease option, a lease purchase, a contract for deed, an all-inclusive trust deed or mortgage. Uh, it's anything that you want it to be, except that it does it differently and it does it a thousand times more safely and it's a thousand times more protective from the standpoint of um, your welfare. So in this case, the resident beneficiary now leases from the trust, equity management company, collects the payments, makes the disbursements for the trustee, and that is a three beneficiary trust. Now, understanding these simple little concepts means millions of dollars uh, difference in what some people would be making if they didn't know what we know, what you do now. So all in all, most simply stated, there simply is no better, safer, or legally pure protective means of seller-assisted real estate financing. And that can't be overstated. It's absolutely the truth. The Equity Holding Trust eliminates the negatives of creative financing, it eliminates due on sale clause, it eliminates anybody's liens and suits and judgments being able to attach to the property, uh, anybody's divorce action attaching to the property. It avoids uh, problems with lease options in, in states where they're disallowed. For example, in Texas, it's against the law to do lease options unless a deed can be transferred within six months for executory contracts. However, in Texas, by use of the equity holding land trust, we can do exactly the same thing 
provide exactly the same benefits as a lease option without there needing to be an option or a bargain purchase price or a special buyout provision, even though the terms will be exactly the same as if a lease option had been structured. The Equity Holding Trust, which at one time was known as the NARS PAC Trust, has been in use throughout the United States without a single failure um, for over 25 years. We have uh, had uh, questionnaires from the IRS uh, uh, doubting the tax deduction element. Uh, we beat every one of those, uh, those, those cases, every single one. Uh, we've had lender do on sale calls probably eight or nine, uh, we beat every one of those. Uh, we've had, uh, we've been named in federal lawsuits in uh, Massachusetts and Virginia and several state lawsuits and we've beat every one of those. Uh, we've been a victor in every single case. We've been doing it for over 25 years. So you can kind of count on us. So I'd just like to ask that you call us with any questions or concerns that you might have. Be happy to talk to you anytime at all. So thank you very much for joining us, and uh, I hope this has been educational. If you take a look below the um, the presentation, you'll see a, um, a hyperlink that will allow you to get to a longer presentation with much more detail. And I uh, hope to see you there. Thank you all very much.